Perfect. So starting off this recording as kind of like the reinitiation of the Cosmos SDK community calls being recorded. And the first speaker um, of the community call is going to be Sergio on ABCI++. So no pressure being the first, first speaker in a while. Thank you, Marco. Yeah, uh, so I, I, I intend to be brief and concise. It might mean that some details are not clear. So please feel free to stop me at any time and ask me any kind of questions if you believe that I'm not doing a good job by explaining it, okay? So um, let me just um, say a few words about the structure, uh, you know, the script that I have prepared here. So I'm gonna present one slide, the one, the one I'm gonna share. I'm gonna present on one slide on the background. Then we're gonna go into the spec specification of ACI++, and then I will say a few words, probably of, of a lot of interest to the SDK team on the tracking issue where we are actually undertaking the um, implementation work for you know, what we're supposed to deliver at the end of this quarter, which is a smart convention, uh, prepare proposal and process proposal. So without further ado, let me try to share. Yeah, things like, looks like it's working. Yeah. Um, can everybody see my screen? Yes. Yep. Perfect. Okay. So um, this slide is uh, kind of the key slide on the main differences between ABCI and ABCI++. This actually was presenting on a you know protocol labs uh, event. In case you're interested, it's, you can find it in YouTube. But basically, uh, that's where I wanted to start. Like this is ABCI. This is the way it is, it is today. This is the way it has been for years. Um, and this is the way it is going to be at the end of the ABCI APACB8++ delivery process. Um, the current plan from the Tenement team is to, to, to phase the delivery of this in different releases. So the part that you see on the, on the left is going to be delivered first. And then the part, like the finalized block and the extend vote, is going to be delivered at a later date. In principle, it should be Q4. Okay. Let me just give a few words on what these are in case uh, some people in the call uh, need some, you know, some background. So basically, these things here, these four things here, are new ways of interacting between consensus or so tenement and the application, the SDK, that is that are going to be introduced and that we commonly call ABCI++. I'm going to explain a little bit in a minute. Then we have finalized block, which is not new; it's just a um, coalesce. Um, it's it's basically coalescing the current begin block, deliver TX, and end block calls that we have. I'm not getting into the details of what um, advantages final, finalized block brings, but believe me, the, it brings a lot of, it renders a lot of optimizations in, in the state machine transition possible. Now, be, be, uh, about prepared proposal and process proposal, I, I will focus on these ones because these are probably the ones that you guys are more, more interested in, most interested in, because these are the ones that are coming first. Board extensions are, are coming later, so probably I'll, I'll probably save for, for the moment, I will save some effort in explaining them. So prepare proposal process proposal is basically that today, um, so Tendermin, when, it, when, when it's time to prepare to propose a new block, it doesn't count on the application, it doesn't count on the SDK in order to produce the block that is gonna be circulated as part of the consensus algorithm. It is a totally internal thing. The only way the app can influence this is via check TX, which is, is kept, it's, this is gonna be kept. It doesn't appear here because it didn't change. It's going to be kept in ABCI++, but check TX is not strong enough for some of the use cases that Zaki is going to be talking about in a minute. And so therefore, we needed to introduce this prepared proposal and process proposal. So what does this do? What it does is when, whenever consensus reaps the mempool with uh, a list of outstanding transactions, instead of circulating it directly into the network, what it's going to be doing, it's going to be via prepared proposal, it's going to share this with the application, with the SDK, uh, meaning with each of the modules of the SDK. And therefore, these modules will be able to examine the transactions that have to do with them, reorder them, add, the, add some delete transactions, do, you know, they can kind of what we, what we call prepare the proposal. So this way, like if there is like a, a, an invalid transactions, this is an extra opportunity other than check TX uh, to filter it out. Once this is done, this arrow means just that the consensus, so the tenement is the client, as you know, so basically, request prepare proposal will make the proposal available, and response prepare proposal will will feed back to the consensus what's the final proposal that it, it is it needs to be it, it needs to be uh, circulated. 
So that's that's prepare proposal. And then process proposal. What happens is that whenever you receive a proposal via the network, then you have this extra opportunity for the application to validate the proposal. So the application can go through the transactions in the proposal and decide. So the SDK. When I say application, please uh, understand SDK. So it has uh, an opportunity that didn't exist before to go through the transactions to make sure that all those transactions are um, valid, are legitimate. If there is concern with that proposal, the and there are some rules about that that I'm going to touch on in a minute, but if there is some concern by the application that this proposal is not valid, is, is bad, then the application in the response uh, call, it can actually reject that proposal. So this, that proposal will never make it into the decision. And so that proposal will never be considered and never make will make, never make it to them to the blockchain. Good. So these new interactions, and this was the point of this slide in this in this presentation, these new interactions are actually open to apps misuse. So this is like with with great power comes comes great responsibility. There are some some ways that the application could use these things that are not, uh, that would be affecting consensus properties, that would be affecting dynamics properties. So the application writer has to be very careful how they structure the code of these callbacks so that this doesn't happen. And this is actually the, the point of my next uh, bullet in the script, which is the specification. So if in, before going to this um, misuse thing, let me just uh, walk you quickly through the current spec of ABCI++. You can find it here, the, the like the, the closest specification, the closest version of the specification today is the one you can find in the Tendermint repo on branch 036. Uh, we are actively working, we're gonna see it in a minute. We are actively working on um, revisiting the specification so that it matches what we're going to deliver for Q3, which will be just part of this. This is the whole ABCA++. We're gonna be delivering only prepared and process proposals. So we will um, remove all references uh, to vote extensions and finalize plot. So the, the, the structure of the spec is this one. So I take the opportunity to, 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 to say that the, the, the core of it is the methods. We're gonna briefly now go into it. Then the requirements and then the expected behavior. So let me, let me go through that. The overview and basic concept is just explaining things in a, you know, in a high level, a high level of detail is somehow making the job I just made in the last five minutes. So. If we click into the methods, we're going to the methods. Here you will find all the method signatures, all the parameters, everything that we are going to be offering. Again, as, as of now, if you look into 036, you are gonna find more information than you need because you, well, actually structured the following way. First, things that don't change with respect to ABCI. There, for instance, you can find like, things like query, check TX, commit. And then there is another uh, section which is the new methods that are introduced in ABCA++. So here you can see prepare proposal and process proposal. And then this in, author if in the next version will disappear, which is very very favorite extension, extend vote, and also finalize block, which is down there. So if you, this is basically some, if, when you start integrating, uh, I think the, the go-to place would be here to, to see you know, what the parameters, there, is, there are plenty of explanations on how to use these parameters, plenty of detail. So if we will go quickly through it. So in the prepare proposal, uh, this is the place where you actually give the transactions that you just ripped, okay? So this is what the application will, I mean, the application can use any of these parameters, but this is gonna be the, 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 the most important one. And then in the response, we get this list of records. And in each of these records, the application is telling you whether you want to keep that, you want to remove it, you want to even to remove from the mempool, you know, there are, the TX record is the transactions attached to an action, okay? Okay, so that's that's basically all I wanted to show you on the methods on the methods front. And then let's get into the the thing that I was I was just um, discussing at the end of the slide, which is the requirements. This section is is of the utmost importance for somebody that wants to integrate with uh, ABC++. The reason, as I said, is that there's there are some behaviors in the application that might seem correct, but they are not. They would be indirectly uh, jeopardizing the uh, ten, uh, ten mint or consensus properties in particular liveness. So we have to be very careful that the code that is written by the application abides by all these requirements. Again, all these requirements are not gonna be um, in force at the end of Q3, particular the ones that for instance have to do with vote extensions. So this, we will remove it from the spec. Let me just give you an example of uh, crucial, uh, crucial um, properties that the application has to respect. 
Let me focus on requir requirement three and requirement four. So in requirement three, what we uh, are asking from the application is coherence. We need that the implementation of prepare proposal is coherent with the implementation of process proposal. What does this mean? What this means is that any block that is produced, that is prepared by your implementation of prepare proposal must be accepted. It is forbidden to reject a proposal that you build. So you cannot, you know, the, the fact that you reject a proposal, that's it, you can you should not be using that as part of your logic. When you reject a proposal, proposal is just because you have strong evidence that this proposal is coming from a Byzantine node, a node that is misbehaving. So that's the first one. And the second is determinism, which is which means that given an input, so a block, given an input to process proposal, say a block you need to validate, this block should be accepted or rejected in a de deterministic way. This is very similar to what we do currently at the end of the block when we execute the block. So here we have to do the same. We cannot afford to have the non-determinism in, in the implementation of process proposal because if, the, if, the, if it diverges here, then um, then then we might not uh, terminate. Uh, so liveness might be accept affected. So I invite you when when you start integrating to to go through this to ask us any questions that you may have. This is really important. This is something that did not exist in ABCI that exists in ABCI plus plus. And actually, there is a presentation by by Hernan where actually we're working on a tool that is actually trying you know is 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 mocking Tendermint and is trying to exercise these properties on a candidate implementation, so for instance, the SDK or any other application. So I invite you also to attend that. I, I sent invites last, last, last night. Marco got invited, so if somebody is interested, Marco, please uh, forward the, the invitation to, to whoever might be interested. Will do. Okay, and I don't know how, how how long I have left, probably not much. You um, So I'm not sure if Zach is here yet or if he's joining since he's actually in Korea. Um, so he might already be asleep. So. Um, if, okay. if you, yes, is it so okay you, if I take five more minutes or is it too long? Uh, five, ten. You can take ten Good. more minutes if you want to. Okay, so so let me just delve into the last part of the specification, and this is actually the other side of the coin. So, uh, what I just preached, <laughs> exactly me the verb. What I just preached about was how you guys, application developers, have to behave so that that means happy. Now I'm actually taking a changing hat, and this is actually the other side of the coin, which is like. If you are uh, an application, this uh, section is describing what you can expect Tendermint to do in terms of calls. So what are the, the sequence of calls that Tendermint as the client, you know that Tendermint is the client, so Tendermint as the client is gonna be calling you. So here, for instance, in this example, is the simplest way you might, and this is basically what's gonna be happening most of the time, which is what is the sequence of calls that you as an application are gonna be, re are gonna be receiving if everything works fine, meaning that the, the the network is not acting up, so all the messages are getting to the, the respective nodes, no, no the Byzantine nodes, so everybody is decided in round zero, et cetera. So this is basically what is gonna happen. This is quite predictable, but as we know, we all know, Tenement is complicated because other than that, if there is a partition, if there are problems, if there is, uh, say, malicious nodes, there may be further rounds, and so things might get messier, and the application should be ready as it used to, should be ready to deal with that. And that's when uh, we move on to this grammar. So this is the grammar we came up with. Uh, you know, if you follow this grammar, if you understand this grammar, this grammar will give you the information of all the possible traces of calls that a particular node might receive from Tendermint from uh, the moment it uh, starts the chain or it joins till the present time, okay? Uh, I have to say something. This is still the whole grammar. So probably for Q3, we're going to simplify it by removing all the part uh, that has to do with the votes, the vote extensions, which we won't. We won't. So this grammar is going to become way easier for Q3. And then the, 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 ones, the one you are actually seeing will be the, what it will actually end up being at the end of our work, hopefully when we deliver uh, across several releases, the, the, the whole of ABCI++. Uh, so, um, so just to, fi to to finish my my work uh, let me just um again with um integration you know with the integration work in mind let me just very very briefly briefly walk you through um the tracking issue that uh, then set up in the tenement board and the relevant work that we are al already undertaking in order to you know in order to deliver this so basically um the work is structured in several threads meaning people working in parallel 
the one that is most in the, of most interest to you is basically the one that co talk, you know that goes about prepare proposal and process proposal. So we are working on it at, as we speak. And um, so basically, uh, if you want to see how this work is um, advancing, you can actually refer to this this part. And what I wanted to focus on here, like why the reason why I show this, uh, I'm showing it now, is that by the moment we have this task which I actually started today well underway, you guys are gonna be able to start integrating because the interface will be there. We won't be, there will be unit tests and end -end tests that, you know, as we do with every, every commit will be passing. There won't be any test nets that run at that time, but like for purely integration work, the APIs when we get here might be stable enough, okay? So you have to watch this guy becoming like this on prepared proposal and this guy becoming like this, this is going to become an issue event eventually. This guy becoming like this, uh, at, the, at this point you guys can st start integration work. And if you need to integrate before, uh, we can come up with a plan to give you some sort of like some side branch or something so that you can actually integrate it before. Um, I have to say that current estimations, which can be, this, these guys have its estimations. These estimations can be wrong, so please take them. It's, they are future guessing as you as you know future guessing is no science so we've done our best at estimating it might be off but it might give you an idea of how far we are from getting this at least to a point where you guys can start integrating the current view is should be about i don't know 15 to 20 day, working days i don't know if that is fast enough if that's not fast enough we can come up with other ways of um you know um making your work your your job easier and um, with that, actually, we, I think I just said everything I wanted to say. I hope it was not too boring or too long. If you have any questions, I'm, we are more than happy to, to answer them. Yeah, I think that's kind uh, of uh, Sorry, uh, maybe I missed this, but uh, uh, can you share the timeline of uh, ABCI++? I uh, when know when can we use this in production? you mean the timeline the current timeline for delivery yeah yeah, yeah so, i mean so you 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 are looking at it so okay this is a simplification because this tracking issue is tracking many more things but the core of it is this part that you can see so this is done and we're now working well this is actually on review at this at this point so this is like have a, we can remove 1.5 days from here and uh, so for prepare proposal at least which actually you could start integrating you have we are kind of seven days away is that answering your question to to add on to that uh for like the sdk side of things um within this sprint we will um there's two phases to base app plus plus the first phase being um the first phase of tendermint during the release of abc plus plus and the second phase being the, the second phase of vote extensions and finalized block so within within this sprint the goal is to have a um completed adr um with how it will be integrated into the sdk um, or at least a uh, adr open and facilitating discussion on it and then in the next sprint is ideally um i think that's uh, that'd be three weeks from now that kind of gives enough time for uh, the tenement team to do the work needed to get these phases in and then an, i believe uh, i talked to thane earlier then an rc would be cut around like um yeah 14 days so like three weeks roughly um and then we will start integrating against that on the SDK. Um, the the goal is, uh, depending on how we do things in the SDK, um, that will kind of like better answer. And so um, I'll definitely make sure to invite everyone who wants to be involved in the ADR discussions. We might do a few breakout calls on that as we're writing the ADR to just design, uh, talk about different designs. And then, um, and then yeah, there's already been some interest from, um, some engineers uh, within the SDK team and external to the SDK team about implementation. Um, so hopefully sooner than later, but there isn't like an exact timeline. Um, to be safe, uh, I think we agreed upon um, with uh, with the Tenderman team that it would be uh, closer to end, like the goal is within Q3 to um, cut a release of Tenderman and um, within Q3, it would be amazing if we could do an SDK release with pre-process and process proposal as well. Um, 
but do take those dates with a grain of salt. Yes, okay. in, the, in, the case, in the case of standard mint, uh, I, I would like to reiterate if you really want to follow, these are estimations, so if you see how these estimations materialize, again, I invite you to, to come here and to see how this evolves, because basically this is going to mark the point wh where we are, we're at, and this is going to give you like a sense of the progression that we, there's also the board, I'm not very familiar, so I, I, you guys will excuse me, that I don't, don't show the board, I don't want to be to seem clumsy. We have a brand new board where you, you can also um, you know um, track the progress we made make as a team. Uh, in the case of ACA plus plus, what I would say is like this is probably the the, the core place that you want to check if you don't you know if, if if you don't want to go to the board. I'd also add very quickly in terms of the API that Sergio has described. There's also the additional work that the SD, the the API that we've described here is going to be probably like we're going to the SDK I'm assuming is going to give you this functionality, but there's some dis probably going to be a distinction between what the SDK's specific API looks like versus what a tenement directly exposes. Um, and I'd imagine that shakes out on the ADR. Yeah, that, that will come through the ADR. Um, there's been preliminary discussions, but nothing concrete and nothing written down. So we will get there soon enough. I, I guess the, so you guys are going to, in the yes, that idea, probably you're going to tackle not only the integration, but also the use cases that Zaki had in mind, right? I wanted to talk about. Yeah, Zaki's not here right now. Um, so he might be asleep uh, with the different time zones. So we can actually go over some of the use cases. I mean, I have like one or two off the top of my head that I know of when I was more involved in the ABC++ plus plus work. Um, I, I think maybe someone else had a question. Jim, did you have a question? Yeah, my question was was on the use cases, so, I, uh, so that's good. But also, whether there is any help or uh, complication with regard to uh, MEV. Um, with the... Um, I think MEV will still be able to be possible. Um, like, I, I, I think MEV kind of like changes in terms of like how it's being done now, potentially to how how it will be done with ABC++ because right now there are MEV clients um, in existence or like being tested right now that kind of have access to Tendermint, the block proposer mechanism. Um, but if the application starts modifying the block after it's like constructed, then I think the MEV clients will have to move to the SDK um, to get that. But this is in the scenario of an app-defined mempool. Um, so that's like one of the use cases there as well. So right now we have, right now with uh, 045 of the SDK, we have a simple FIFO list of a mempool. With 046, we have the prioritized mempool, and I believe um, it's still unclear what the next release number will be, but um, we're working on that right now. But there is the potential for an app-defined mempool. So in the case, so a simple example of how this could potentially work is where check TX gets called and the application says, yes, please gossip this around. And then um, and then the application keeps the transaction in its in its own like mempool. And when the pre-process, when uh, I keep calling it pre-process, but uh, pre when the prepare proposal happens, then uh, the application would say, okay, this many bytes are able to fit in the block, and I'm going to like fill the block with transactions from my mempool instead of the ones Tendermint is giving me. Um, and so there's a lot more ways you can um, construct block space. There's a lot more ways how you can define priority than just a number here. Um, and so that's like one immediate use case. Um, I would say, and I think a, a really fun one that teams like Osmosis are already um, talking with Dave. He's already feeling to get that in um, sooner than later. Um, another use case that I don't think is possible within the Cosmos SDK, but for other people in the future um, and potentially in the future in the SDK is signature aggregation. So if you have a aggregatable um, signature uh, scheme within the Cosmos SDK, something let's say like BLS account keys, then all of a sudden when prepare proposal comes and Tendermint gives the block, 
the SDK could potentially aggregate all keys to a signal single signature, all signatures to a single signature via, via BLS signatures. So at the end, when the block is finalized and going to be executed against state, then, um, then instead of verifying X amount of transaction signatures, you're just verifying one signature. Um, and so there's a, there's, very, there's a lot of use cases like that. You could also start executing state um, at the prepare and the process proposal phase. So by the time you come to commit, then you already have the state executed in cache, and then you just need to call to write it to state to write it to the store. Um, so those are three potential use cases um, that I have off the top of my head. I see Henry has a question. Um, where is it? Yeah, right there. You can go. Uh, I have a question I, about the, the MBT tool that was mentioned for um, testing ABC apps, and maybe this is a better thing for another presentation. So if so, I'll happy to get a wolf hunt on it. Um, one thing that we've been thinking about for um, number is is wanting to be able to do simulations like faster than Tendermint. We're like, aside, aside from sort of like, are we doing, you know, this more complicated sequence of, of messages correctly, just being able to simulate like what happens when we process like all these different transactions uh, in our app state machine. Um, and so we were actually kind of vaguely wondering about writing a, like a, a Rust based sort of like mock Tendermint that wouldn't do any of the consensus stuff, but would just like, you know, present a sequence of messages. I'm wondering if it would, if that's something that could be hooked into that, um, like MBT tool, or who yeah, would be so a good person to chat with. Th that is a very good question. So let me try to answer it. Uh, probably the best answer you you get you're gonna get it from Erlan. But I'm gonna I'm gonna try. So yes, actually one of the parts that are kind of manual in his tool. Okay, let me let me actually let me try to share again. Sorry about this. I stopped. So, so the tool that is going to be is going to be presented is based. Well, the current version is based on a simplified version of this grammar, but the goal is to to be able to represent the whole grammar in the tool. So basically, what the tool mm -hmm. is going to be doing is it's going to be trying to generate like a trace that is compatible with this grammar, and it's going to be calling it on your on your application. To see if the application behaves according to the rules that I presented in the other side of in the, in the other section of the, the requirement section, right? And so one of the yeah. manual parts of this, like one of the so so this is general for all applications because all applications are going to be getting this uh, these calls in the same sequence. What changes from app to app is basically the contents of the transactions, right? And so one of the manual activities today in that tool is when you for your application need to convert. The kind of general or like I don't know abstract parameters for each of these calls to uh, to actual parameters with real transactions, and so this is something that you have to do today manually, and this is has not been developed by the tool. You need to do it manual, so you have all the power, but also it's manual. So there's probably room for improvement there in terms of you know what the tool can provide you to do automatically, but definitely what you want to do is something that we can plug into that tool. Yes, I don't know if that answered your question. Um, yeah. Uh, so the, the 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 tool is just handling sort of like generating weird traces of uh, app defined messages, but it needs some like pipe for those app defined messages to come in, and maybe it would be possible you know if you also had this other tool that would generate the app defined messages, yes, to sort of cook those things up. To cool. Yes, uh, and 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 and. Like in order to further discuss it, I would need Hernan to tell you the truth. I I, cool. uh, I admit my I admit my limits, and probably this is a, an excellent discussion. I mean, I, I don't know if you're coming, you're planning to come to the meeting, but it would be super enriching for that meeting if yeah. you actually raise this point there. Yes. Yeah, I've already added you, Henry. Great. Awesome, um, Sergio. I mean, there is. Uh, 
Do you have any use cases that you would want to share right off the bat before we close and move on to the next item on the agenda? Oh, you're muted. Sorry. Yeah, what I can do is uh, probably I'm not, you know, uh, Dave or, or or Jackie would make a much better job than I than I am gonna do, but just um, what I can do is just come back to the presentation. Here there was a slide. I wasn't planning on presenting it today, but it's fine. Like I would, there was a slide here with uh, example of use cases. So for people, I had use cases for more extensions, but these probably are not um, are not interesting enough. This is the slide I had. So basically. What you can do is anything where you need transaction reordering. What I'm thinking of is, for, for instance, things like you know handling transactions that have sequence numbers. What comes to my mind is basically uh, order channels in IBC. This is something that I know that IBC uh, has been struggling for a long time with. So uh, hopefully, a prepare proposal will be able to help him here. Um, things like like things like what Celestia is planning to do, which is basically each of the transactions has two parts when they are submitted. And whenever it is being proposed, each of those transactions has, is going to be split in half, and this is going to be reorganized in, 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 in you know another way. So basically, the kind of transactions you 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 end up having in the block have nothing to do with the transactions that were submitted. So that's like one 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 extreme case. This is going to be possible with prepared proposal. Uh, for process proposal, the the main use case that I can think of is dealing with Byzantine proposals. So the, in this presentation, the example I was giving was imagine a, a Byzantine node that is basically making up a massive block full of bogus transactions, fuzzy transactions, and it basically circulates that. Today, today, at, le at the minimum level, there's no way to prevent that from making it to the blockchain. I know that in at the SDK level, there is. It's called POS. It's called slashing. So if somebody does that, it's going to be slashed. So there is a way. But at the minimum level, there is none. Now with this thing, there is, you know, there is a, an extra way, which is like process proposal can reject that transaction. And what is worse, before, uh, if you had um, um, if you had a Byzantine that submits a huge block full of bogus transactions, not only it is going to make it very likely to the blockchain, but but also the application. So you guys have to react in a deterministic way to something which is a massive. For the input, which I think we we agree, it's going to be you know like you, you of course you're going to ignore those transactions are invalid, but it's not easy you know when you're fuzzing when you're fuzzing the inputs, it's very hard to make sure that your application is going to react deterministically. And finally, immediate execution, which is one of the things that you are you guys are going to uh, I'm not sure if you, well we I I I I would have to think about this again because we're not delivering finalized block. I think it you can still do it. Which is like you can execute the block at the moment it is proposed, rather rather than at the moment. Well, on top, in addition to the moment it is decided, it is uh, delivered. Uh, the difference here is that you might be able to be way more accurate than CheckTX at being 100% sure that you are rejecting any invalid transaction that might have been submitted and CheckTX wasn't able to catch. So this is also a very important use case that is probably enabled. It's going to be a bit weird to implement if you don't have finalized block because that means that the the logic you cannot reuse the logic because the finalized block was supposed to you know will will be delivering the whole block in one shot and that simplifies things a lot in the sense that you can use the same code uh, in prepare proposal and in finalized block. Now we have the begin block deliver TXM block. Maybe I mean I haven't thought en enough about it to tell you the truth, but uh, at least this this use case is somehow already enabled. And for sure, whenever finalized block lands, that's I think all I had on on use cases for paper proposal process proposal. Amazing, at least some. Okay, a... Sorry, go ahead. Uh, can I have like a few small questions? Yeah. Thanks. Um, so one, it's about this transaction aggregation. Can you like give like a little bit of a glimpse how it works and does it require anything special or it will be just you know provided. Um, like directly. Yeah, that is a very good question. Um, let me try to make an extra for an answer this properly. So, or, or like, if there is like any document you can share. Yes, yes, that's basically what I'm what I'm getting at. So, at, at the risk of taking a little bit more time, let me just get you to a really uh, detailed answer, which is uh, sorry, guys, about this. Uh, yeah, prepare proposal. So, if we go, you know. 
the response is, as I said, is a, a, um, a list of TX records. If you actually get, go into the TX record, we can see that there is the transaction and an action. And so an action, basically, you can say, this transaction was unmodified. So it's basically the same transactions you gave me. It might be at a different place, but it's the same. You can add new transactions, and you can remove transactions. So if you want to aggregate transactions, what you can do is you can signal. For instance, you, have, you want to uh, aggregate tra transaction one, two, and three. So you are going to remove, uh, sorry, you're going to return those three transactions with the remove action. And then we will, you will have the new transaction, which represents the aggregate one, as added. So it, it is possible, yes. Uh, there was but what, does it, what, what does it mean to aggregate transaction? How do so, you define it? So to us, Tendermint, we don't have the concept of aggregation, but with the actions that we are offering you, you application are able to aggregate it by removing the transactions to aggregate and adding the aggregated transaction, which for oh, us so is all, a, 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 it, it's always a byte array, right? We don't understand what transactions are. So uh, we just trust you that you're doing the right thing. There's oh, one, one, so caveat here, one caveat here, which is that at a given point when we were specifying this, we were tempted to extend this to, to um, I'll say this, to also provide a way to track a, a transactions that have been aggregated. We made we gave it a try, but it didn't really work. And we decided that at least for the moment, we're not going to offer that. We might offer that in the future, but today we're not going to offer the, the, the possibility of tracking transactions that have been aggregated. So all you will see that if a transaction got, was aggregated, at least at the minimum level, is that the, the transaction was removed from mempools at a given point. And so you need to understand the logic of the app to see that that transaction was actually part of another one. And that would be something mm -hmm. that the app would have to implement and then mean won't. Uh, I, I'm, so, we apologize about that, but we didn't come up with a, a satisfactory solution. So we did not want to get into something like half-baked. Right, so basically what happens is that in the mempool, let's say we have transaction one, two, and three. Uh, tender means app, app if they want to aggregate transaction one, two, and three, and if the app approve it, it will remove this transaction and combine it into, I don't know, one new transaction. Uh, actually, it will be all, all the application doing. So uh, all, all the term will do is it will include the three transactions in the row proposal. So the proposal that it pro like it tells the application, this is what I would be, you know, what I would be proposing. Then the app decides to say, okay, T1, T2, T3 can be aggregated. I remove them. So I mark them as removed. And then I add T4, whose bytes represent the aggregation of T1, T2, and T3. And I, I mark it as added. And so then I mean, we'll just take that. We'll remove T1, T2, and T3 from the mempool. And then it, it will actually circulate T4 uh, uh, around so that if in the end that is the round in which we reach a decision, that will be, you know, T4 will make it to the, to the, to the blockchain, whereas T1, T2, T3 will never make it to the blockchain. I see. And then at the end, there is no trace that uh, there was transaction one, two, and three. Unfortunately not. That's what I was trying to say. So we tried to tackle that problem, but there were so many moving pieces that we decided for the moment not to offer that. If there is strong, uh, how to say this, if there is strong interest in that, we might consider at, at a future time trying to come up with a with a better solution than just saying this your right. transaction was removed by the application right something probably like a taproot could be like you know you can just add the proof to like other transactions without including them and then like this leaves a trace that there were other transactions without in fact adding those transactions yeah yeah thanks for the suggestion. Could, right could you could you share this link um the, the one you are like the, this one is the one i shared on the on the chat so it's the spec uh, it's one of the sub sub uh, sections. Uh, mm -hmm. so uh, okay. chat. Yeah. One question here is: um, Does this mean recheck TX is mandatory when modifying transactions? Yeah, a good question. Uh, modified transactions are not uh, at a given uh, at a given version of the spec. We were considering that in the end. That was a little bit like aggregations, the same example. So we decided to keep it kind of simple for the moment. So modifying transactions is not a concept we accept, but it can be done by removing and adding. Yeah, and, and so, but um, so if you mod the the tra the transaction hash here would be different, correct? Yes. Um, and so to when you need, when you need to go, if that transaction is like in another that transaction that was modified. If if the hash of that transaction is not also included in the block, then how does it get removed from other people's mempools? 
uh okay you mean the original transaction yeah yeah so that is that is up to the app so okay that transaction is supposed to be in other mempools right so at a given point all other nodes all other say validators will prepare you know if if check tx doesn't get rid of it at a given point by rechecking tx's because for, by some means the application is able to see that this transaction was somehow modified if that is not the case then it will eventually be passed up to prepare proposal and so prepare proposal is supposed to be able to realize that this transaction is already there and remove it i know it's not the best uh, way but uh, you know this the the best thing we could do in a general way like that would be useful for all applications without having to to know about the application logic oh, that's, so a very, that's a very good these these are excellent questions for for probably coming up with improvements to this in the future yes awesome um right, uh, this feature you yeah very short uh, if with this feature you can implement basically coin join sorry i didn't send the last word if you can with this feature implement coin join coin join yeah uh sorry i don't know what that is sorry about that. like a uh, wasabi bitcoin wasabi coin join I don't know what this is. I I, I would I, I would have to look what you got. Yeah, I, I would have to look okay. it up. If, if William or Tim can help me up there, I I, I don't know what what. Uh, I might need to give a TLDR. I, I'm not fully understanding as well. Yeah, I have no idea either. So, if yeah, if you can explain how coin what coin join is or how that works, I can. I'm pretty confident oh, we can tell coin. you. I oh Marco, do you know what that is? I just don't know what it is. It's a Bitcoin thing. It does transaction aggregation. I would assume if you can. If, go ahead. Yeah, this is this goes back to Robert's question. So if it's transaction ag aggregation, that's um, the answer is the same. Like we can um, we support transaction aggregation via removing the aggregate the transactions to aggregate and adding the aggregated transaction. But it's up to the app to implement it in prepared proposal. That would be prepared proposal implementation. Sorry, William, I interrupted you. No, no, totally fine. I'm assuming it's something like you have a thousand separate transactions that are all like moving to one account and that like maybe what you can do is just aggregate them all to be like actually these two account balances only change by a total of five, something like that. That's totally doable with this. Um, it would look like what Sergio was talking about where you mark all of the ones that you don't care about anymore as remove and then you Set a bunch of new ones as added, and that would, you know, compress the amount of space that's used in the block to just that smaller set. If that's how Coin Join works, I don't uh, totally know, but yeah, yeah. So, sort of like that. Um, Bitcoin doesn't have accounts, right? So it's just UTXOs. And the point is that, like, what you care about in the transaction is like, does the transaction value balance? And so, if you think of a transaction as being like, okay, a bundle of like uh, spent UTXOs and a bundle of uh, newly created ones. Um, if you have a bunch of transactions where like this set of spends and output balances and this set of spends and output balances and so on, you can just like lump all of those together into a single transaction. And then, you know, if they all balance individually, they'll balance together. And the idea is that like, you could use this for some kind of privacy. Um, that makes, yeah, that, that would be totally doable. The thing that you need to implement that Tendermint wouldn't provide you with is just the ability to like cryptographic graphically make sure that what you've done was legal in all cases like you know each each transaction is signed for example and so if you you know aggregate the transactions in some way you need to have some scheme that that allows the other oh. observers on the network to make sure that you haven't done something yeah legal. so the, the cool thing about the, the the reason that this works is that the in a, a bitcoin transaction is not actually signed sort of as the whole transaction but like each spend has its own authorization so if you if your auth predicate for your spend is like correctly formed, you can define exactly like you, you can basically build like fragments of a transaction that you can slot into other transactions as you like. It's kind of neat. That sounds very cool. Y yeah, yeah I mean, I think because sense. because like in technically you can implement like a new account for a new spend. If you want, so like on top of that, you could implement, I think, like the Coinjoin protocol. I believe this is supported. The only um, caveat, which is what, what I answered to Robert, is, and I'll, I'll be to Marco as well, is 
that we don't have today, we don't have a sol uh, general solution, so non-application dependent solution for tracking transactions that have been modified, aggregated or, or whatever it is. So we don't have that. And this is probably um, a weak point, but that's as good as we could get today. And then like, let's deliver on this. And uh, and if this is basically something that is getting in, into, in, in, into applications way, so probably this will have to be we will need to come up with a solution at the minimum level, of course. I, I but, linked the RFC that I wrote a while ago in the chat just on the difficulties of implementing that, like the challenges that it poses uh, of implementing some tracking mechanism within Tendermint if you want some more information on what the, you know, what the hurdles exist as for implementing that. Thanks, William. Yeah, perfect. Yeah, that, is, that, is, that, 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 that document is super useful to basically is, a, is the, the answer, the, the long answer to what we are trying to explain, William and I. I think rechecks almost like eighty percent of the use cases. So I think I think we're safe on the application once we get to there. Um, but sweet, I know we have six minutes left, and I saw I do add um, store v two. Um, I'll just keep the uh, keep the recording going. Um, yeah, so store v two, uh, we're working on a, a finalization path. Um, so. Um, Vulcanize is writing up some documentation and doing some final testing. I think they'll do some testing on, on SimApp. Um, they're doing some final testing. And then I think the burden uh, is going to be passed on to the SDK for uh, how we can get it merged in a timely manner and like into production. And so we're working with uh, Vulcanize on that. Um, once Vulcanize opens the PR against Celestia's SMT implementation, then um, we'll work with the Celestia team about uh, we're seeing if we can get that uh, implementation and um, fork upstreamed. Um, and so there's there's a few moving parts going on um, right now, and we're trying to finalize this. The only problem right now is uh, Bez and Aaron are on vacation, um, and we were meant to have a have a call about this about like how we will modify our deliverables as the SDK team to, uh, and if we will do it. And so, um, yeah, so I think they're back next week, I wanna say. Um, and so then we'll have a better update for you guys on store V2. Um, but yeah, it's just uh, summer is a time of vacation for everyone. So we're trying to juggle um, everyone com coming in and out. Otto, does that uh, get, get uh, does, does that answer somewhat the question you were looking for, or are you looking for a different, an answer to a different question? Uh, thanks for your update, but uh, uh, still I have some more questions about uh, the current status of storage in two. I mean, uh, uh, do we have any other blockers or, or obstacles about, uh, for example, performance? Uh, I, I mean, uh, uh, previously we benchmarked uh, the store version two, but uh, the performance is not uh, as expected. So, is this solved? I mean, is performance uh, has performance come to a good outcome? Does it? So, so, so um, this is part of the the document that Vulcanize is working on to. Um pass on kind of like an update on everything that's going on. Um, and so I like, I don't, I don't think me, Aaron or Bez, um, I also don't know who on the SDK team would be able to tell you how the performance is going. Um, and so, and, and so I, I can't really give you an answer, but I, the answer I can give you is um, like performance is a huge thing for us. Um, right now we're like, really seeing performance being pushed of both Tendermint and the SDK, and it's becoming a bigger priority for us. And so if it is slower than IVL, then we do, um, then we will work on making it more performant um, as like we can't release slower, slower software in a time where performance is uh, the craze and needed for the ecosystem. I can like, add a few things to this answer. Thanks, Marco. For like yeah. you know adding like general background so uh, i mean i spent like last um you know like last week like also like looking at ivl uh, so basically uh there are a few um things which we need to uh backport 
from um, IVL, I mean, start version one implementation. So back on time, uh, from what I remember, yeah, so there was the post where Vulcanize team basically was busy with some other project. And um, let's say like the base implementation was there, but none of the optimizations have been ported, notably caching. In the meantime, there was like another layer of caching, so the fast cache being added to the IAVL, uh, then like a fast conversions. So those are like a few things which can be ported to the store version two as well. And there was like one of this bottleneck related to um, the deserialization. Uh, and uh, like that thing, I, I don't think like uh, uh, if that was solved, but uh, yes, that would like require like looking where exactly and how exactly this can be optimized. Um, because like that was the, uh, like the uh, triggering the major uh, performance degradation. Um, so like those are the, like I would say bunch of things to uh, to optimize the implementation to uh, to put it uh, uh, to the level of the uh, ideal or or like I mean the idea is to to get it below the whole goal. Okay, thanks to Robert. Thank you, Robert. So I mean, feel free, feel free, really, like if you have any resources, it will be super great. Feel free, like to um, to reach out. Um, we can like prepare a few of tasks that can like help, uh, or maybe like ask Marco. Marco can probably like, coordinate if you if you will have time. And um, yes, that's like something I would say like a straightforward. Yes, to go forward, it's like by backporting these optimizations. Okay, I'd allow to, and uh, yeah, allow to help with these optimizations. Yeah, I do. We'll definitely be uh, tapping you on the shoulder. Um, you've done a bunch of work with Store V2, um, and especially the interblock cache, the, the peer that you have open right now. Um, but yeah, um, this wraps up the community call.